By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are gathered to commemorate and remember the lives of three daughters of our master Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. After our discussion in the previous week, in relation to his youngest daughter, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Today's discussion is in relation to the life of Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Ruqayya and Sayyidah um, Ummu Kulthum radiyallahu ta'ala anhunna. Firstly, in relation to the blessed life of Sayyidah Zainab bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is the eldest daughter of our master Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyidina Zainab radiyallahu ta'ala anha was born 10 years prior to the announcement of prophethood and at a time when our master sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was 30 years old. Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha entered into Islam, accepted Islam immediately at the time when the truth of Islam was announced. She migrated after the Battle of Badr to the city of Al Madinah to Tayyiba. Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, prior to the announcement of prophethood, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam had married her to her cousin, the son of her maternal uncle Abu al-As ibn Rabi' radiyallahu ta'ala an who later entered into Islam and was blessed to become a sahabi, a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu al-As ibn Rabi' was the nephew of Umm al-Mu'mineen Sayyidah Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And when I said the cousin, meaning the son of the maternal uncle, rather the son of the maternal aunt of Sayyidah, Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. The mother of The mother of Abu al-As was Hala bint Khuwaylid radiyallahu ta'ala anha who was the sister of Umm al-Mu'mineen Sayyidah Khatija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. It was upon the request of Sayyidah Khatija radiyallahu ta'ala anha that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam carried out this marriage of his daughter Sayyidah Zainab with Abu al-As bin Rabi. While Sayyidah Khatija, Khatija's daughter Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha entered into Islam in the beginning days, her husband Abu al-As ibn Rabi entered into Islam in the seventh year of Hijra. During the Battle of Badr, Abu al-As ibn Rabi had not yet entered into Islam. 
And it was during this battle that he was taken amongst the prisoners of war to Medina al Munawwara. So he was amongst the disbelievers and he was amongst those disbelievers who were taken to al Medina al Munawwara as prisoners. At that time, Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha was in Mecca al Mukarrama and had not yet migrated to al Madinah al Munawwara, but by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she was blessed with Iman. When she was informed that her husband was amongst the prisoners, she sent a chain to be given in exchange for the freedom of her husband. However, the companions, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'een, with the permission of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, returned this chain to Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, because this chain that she gave was a chain that was given, this necklace that she gave was a necklace that was given to her by her mother, the mother of believers, Sayyidah Khatija al Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam freed Abu al-As ibn Rabi with the condition that he would send Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha to al Madinah al Munawwara. Sayyidina Abu al-As ibn Rabi radiallahu ta'ala an at that time was not a Muslim, but he fulfilled this promise and he sent Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha with her brother, with his brother, sorry, Kinana ibn Rabi. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Sent Sayyidina Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu ta'ala an and another companion from the Ansar to, to collect Sayyidina Zainab radiallahu anha and to bring her to al Madinah al Munawwara. So there's a place on the way where they met with Kinana and brought Sayyidina Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha to Madinah al Munawwara. Is mentioned in Sharh al Zarqani al al Mawahib al Dunya that when Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha set off from Mecca al Mukarrama, the Quraysh, the disbelievers amongst the Quraysh, tried to stop her from carrying on on this journey. And they tried to frighten her. And amongst them, there was a man, an oppressive man, an unfortunate man called Hibar ibn al-Aswad. He tried to attack Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, due to which she fell from her camel and she lost the child that she was expecting. The, her brother-in-law, the brother of her husband, Kinana, who was with her, he took his arrow out and he scared the Quraysh. He warned them that he would destroy anybody who would try to follow and tried to chase Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. So due to this, eventually the Quraysh stopped and their leader Abu Sufyan told them to allow 
her to carry on and he made the path towards al Madinah al Munawwara clear for her radiallahu ta'ala anha. This shows to us the great difficulties and the great sacrifices the Sahaba made when they travelled from Makkah al Mukarramah to Al Madinah al Munawwara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a great love and affection with which the Ansar, the people of Madinah al Munawwara, welcomed the people of Makkah al Mukarramah. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّعُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ Those who reside in Al-Madinah Al-Munawwara who reside in Al-Madinah Al-Munawwara before the arrival of the Muhajireen they love those who migrated to them وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا They did not find and they do not find within their hearts any need or any jealousy or any envy of what these people are given for their sacrifice. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا And they sacrifice upon themselves. They do ithar, they make a sacrifice even if they are in a loss themselves. Ithar is different to just sacrificing in a normal way. Ithar is giving that which one is in need of himself to his brother. The Ansar radiallahu ta'ala anhum, the, re the residents of Al-Madinah al-Munawwara, they carried out this Ithar. They gave to the Muhajireen that which they needed themselves. And they never found it difficult they never found it a burden to give to the muhajireen what they had. You know, today, in, in this day and age, we find that one's own relatives, one, one's own blood brothers, would not be prepared to give half of their wealth or even a part of their wealth to their own brother. They'll say, I have worked hard for this, I have earned this. This is not for my brother. But the Ansar عنهم, established this brotherhood with those who migrated, who made the sacrifice, left their homes. And not only left their homes, they traveled on this path where they were continuously chased by the Quraysh, troubled by the Quraysh. And the bravery of these women of Islam, such as Sayyidah Zainab anha is a great lesson for this ummah, for the brothers and sisters of this ummah in relation to the difficulties that people face when they travel and they migrate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now when we talk about migration, what is the meaning of hijrah? Hijrah actually means to leave. And that's why in the hadith it stated, Al-Muhajiru man hajara ma nahallahu an. The muhajir is he who left what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited him from. So we can also be muhajireen by, even though we do not move from where we are. How can we do that? By leaving that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with. So Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha faced this great difficulty. If we wish to know how difficult it is then we should speak to those brothers and sisters who have faced this calamity of losing children before the birth of the children. Right? Just as difficult as it is difficult after the birth of children, losing the children before their birth is also a great calamity for the brothers and sisters, for those who are expecting these children. And especially for the women who are expecting these children. And Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anha faced this difficulty in her journey towards Al-Madinah al-Munawwara. 
The Prophet sallallahu said, Hiya afdalu banati usibat fiya. Zainab is the most virtuous of my daughters. She was given, she was, she was, she was, she was tested and she was afflicted in my way. Due to me, she faced many tests. And amongst those tests was also the test of having to wait for her husband to eventually enter into the folds of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him. He eventually entered into Islam and was blessed to be a Sahabi. But originally, he remained firm. He remained upon the path of kufr, the path of disbelief, to the extent that he was amongst the prisoners of war during the Battle of Badr. Then he remained in Makkah al Mukarramah and she came to Al Madinah al Munawwara. And, and she arrived in Al Madinah al Munawwara in the third year of Hijra and after Hijra. And he entered into Islam in the seventh year of Hijra. And he eventually migrated to Madinah al Munawwara and resided with Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away in the eighth year after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Her ghusl was carried out by the blessed women. Amongst them was the mother of believers, Sayyidah um, Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha, as well as Sayyidah Umm Ayman and Sayyidah Sauda radiallahu ta'ala anhun. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave one of his own cloth, cloth, one of his own garments for the kafan, of, for the shrouding of Sayyidina Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam placed Sayyidina Zainab radiallahu anha in her grave with his own blessed hands. Is mentioned by Ibn Al Ibn Al Athir in Usul Al Ghaba that Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anha passed away in the eighth year of Hijra in Al Madinah Al Munawwara, and Rasulullah sallallahu taala alayhi wasallam entered into her grave whilst he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was aggrieved, was sad. When he وسلم, came out, he وسلم, was in a state of calmness and he said, I was remembering Zainab and her weakness and I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make lighter for her the matters of the grave protect her from the tightness of the grave, from grief within the grave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this and made her matter of her grave easy for her. So this daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was placed in the grave in the best of manners. How fortunate was she that her shroud consisted of a cloth that was that was of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she was blessed with the dua with the supplication of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha had a son by the name of Ali and a daughter by the name of Umama radiallahu ta'ala anhuma According to some narrations, the son of Sayyidina Zainab, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, passed away during her life, before he reached, before he reached adolescence. And this is also mentioned in as well as being mentioned in Sharh al-Zarqani al-Mawahib, it's also mentioned in Ustul al ghaba Ibn Asakir, rahimahullah, 
mentioned that some ulama state that Sayyida, Sayyidina Ali bin Zainab bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was martyred in the battle of Yarmouk. So there are some narrations that are mentioned by such a great scholar as Ibn Asakir that Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha her son Sayyidina Ali was alive after adolescence and he participated in the battle of Yarmouk and that's where he was martyred. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best the situation in relation to this. The daughter of Sayyida Zainab radiallahu anha, Sayyida Umama radiallahu ta'ala anha was blessed to have great proximity to Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved her a lot and he would often carry her on his blessed shoulders and take her to the to blessed masjid, his masjid, Masjid al-Nabawi. It's mentioned in the narrations that the king of Abyssinia, Najashi, gave a gift in, in which there was included a ring. This narration is also mentioned by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, who narrates this from Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha. And the Prophet sallallahu said, that sorry the ring is a separate is a separate um, narration the the prophet sallallahu was given a gift in which there was a, go- a gift of gold a golden ring and the prophet sallallahu gave this ring to say that umama and another narration is that there was a gift of a necklace given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said La adfa'uha ila ahabbi ahli ilayk I will give this to the most beloved of my family the one who is most beloved amongst my family and although this is not mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed it's mentioned in Sharh al-Zarqani that everybody said that our minds went towards this going to say the Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give this to say the Aisha and the Prophet ﷺ called Umama bin Zainab and the Prophet ﷺ placed this necklace upon her uh, neck with his own blessed hands. Amongst the narrations of, in relation to say that Zay, uh, Umama bin Zainab is a narration mentioned in the Muatta of Imam Malik rahimahullah, as narrated by Imam Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani rahimahullah. He says, أَخْبَرْنَا مَالِكٌ أَخْبَرَنِي عَامِرُ بْنُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ الزُّبَيْرِ عَنْ عَمْرِ بْنِ سُلَيْمِ الزُّرَقِي عَنْ أَبِي قَتَادَةِ السُّلَمِي أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يسلي وهو حامل أمامة بنت زينب بنت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولأبي العاس بن الربيع فإذا سجد وضعها وإذا قام حملها So Imam Malik narrates from Amir bin Abdullah bin Zubair from Amr bin Sulaim al-Zuraqi, who narrates from Abi Qatada al-Sulami, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray whilst carrying Sayyidah Umama bint Zainab bint Rasulullah, who is also the daughter of Abil As bin Now in relation to this point, that in the hadith, in the narration here is said, Zainab, Umama bint Zainab bint Rasulullah. Umama, the daughter of Zainab, who is the daughter of Rasulullah, and then after that he said, and the daughter of Abil As bin Rabi, radiallahu ta'ala an. So first of all, her nisba is being mentioned to her mother first. One reason for this mentioned by the scholars is that this is a rebuttal 
of those deviants who say that the only daughter of Sayyidina Rasulullah is Sayyidina Fatima and they reject the others being direct daughters of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi billah. And the other reason is that Sayyidah's Umama's connection through Sayyidah Zainab to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is the most noble connection. As, in, as if you compare that to the other connection that she has through her father, Her father is the nephew of Sayyidah Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. But the most noble of her lineage, the most, the greater lineage is actually through her mother. And that's why that's been mentioned. And similarly, Imam al-Zarqani rahimahullah mentioned, فَنُسِبَتْ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهَا تَنْبِيهًا عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْوَلَدِ يُنْسَبُ إِلَىٰ أَشْرَفِ أَبَوَيْهِ دِينًا وَنَسَبًا they, they connected her to her mother to warn and to make clear that the child will be attributed to those of his parents or her parents who are greatest in deen and in nasab. But then in this narration is mentioned that she's the daughter of Abil As bin Rabi to make clear that it is important to mention the actual lineage of a person and not to change the lineage. And Imam al-Fakihani said, كَأَنَّ السِّرَّ فِيهِ دَفْعُ مَا أَلَّفَتْهُ الْعَرَبِ مِنْ كَرَاهَةِ الْبَنَاتِ It seems as though the secret behind this is to remove and push away what the Arabs had gathered in terms of their disliking of daughters. They dislike daughters and they dislike to pick up daughters. And the Prophet ﷺ rejected this action of theirs to the extent that in Salah, our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would carry Umama bin Zainab bin Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he did this to rebut their ignorance. And in terms of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would carry her during salah and when he would perform sajda he would place, put her down and when he would stand he sallallahu alayhi wa would carry her again. The ulama have had a difference of opinion about what this means, but the reason why we mention this is that this is also one of the virtues and unique attributes of Sayyidah Zainab and her ch a child, her daughter Sayyidah Umama, and that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi would carry her during Salah. Some scholars have said that this is from the khasais of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's from the specialities of our Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would carry. Sayyidah Umama radiallahu anha in salah. Some have said that this is because at that time, Amalul Kathir, a lot of action was not forbidden in salah. Afterwards, Amalul Kathir was forbidden, so one would not be allowed to do such actions, so as carrying a child in salah. And some said, have, have said that this was due to darura, due, this was due to need, right? That the fact that. Um, there was nobody else to look after Sayyidah Umama and if Rasulullah did not carry her, there would be further disturbance in Salah and this is why it was done. But many have gone towards it being from the specialities of Rasulullah and that this is also from those matters that show that he وسلم, is mukhtar, has authority in relation to matters of Sharia and the way that Sharia applies to others does not necessarily, the same rulings do not necessarily apply to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's many examples of how there are things that are specific to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the ummah cannot do but he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is able to do sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
And Imam As-Suyuti rahimahullah said that by holding, this was not an invalidation of the Salah because of the fact that it was Amalul Qaleel. Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam. But as usual, I'm giving you the further explanations in relation to that. But the, the gist of the discussion was, let's say that Umama bin Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha was beloved to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi He would carry her to the masjid and he sallallahu alayhi would even carry her during Salah as well. Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha is also from the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose blessed life we are discussing in today's session. Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha was born seven years prior to the announcement of prophethood by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she was born at the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was 33 years of age. She also entered into Islam during the beginning days, as soon as Islam was announced. She was originally married to the son of Abu Lahab called Utba. However, the marriage did not, was not consummated and the marriage had not continued for long until the Surah Lahab was revealed in condemnation of the father of Utba, Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was very angry with the situation that he was being disgraced in this manner when this surah was revealed and he forced his son Utba to divorce Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. It's mentioned in Ustul Ghaba that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married his daughter Sayyidah Ruqayya to Utba, the son of Abu Lahab, and his other daughter Ummu Kulthum radiallahu anha to Utayba ibn Abi Lahab. So the two daughters married to two of the sons of Abu Lahab. When the uh, surah, to, uh, surah Abu Lahab was revealed, Surah Lahab was revealed, their father said, as well as their mother, that you should separate from the daughters of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَفَارَقَاهُمَا قَبْلَ أَنْ يُدْخِلَا بِهِمَا now the beautiful wording of Ibn al-Athir is فَفَارَقَاهُمَا قَبْلَ أَنْ يُدْخِلَا بِهِمَا كَرَامَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَهُمَا وَهَوَانَ لِبْنَيْ أَبِي لَهَبْ So they separated, they divorced the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu before consummating the marriage and this was an honour from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu that they were not in the marriage of the sons, no longer in the marriage of the sons of this wretched and evil individual Abu Lahab. And it was a disgrace for the two sons of Abu Lahab. So it's actually a disgrace for them. So after the marriage with Utba was finished, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam gave Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu anha in marriage to Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. And this was in Makkah al-Mukarrama when this marriage took place. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an migrated with his wife, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to Abyssinia. And then from Abyssinia, they returned to Makkah al-Mukarrama and migrated to Medina to Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would inquire from people in relation to the situation of the people who would come from Abyssinia, he would inquire from them in relation to the situation of Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ruqayya. A woman came once and she said that I have seen them and the Prophet said 
May Allah protect them both. For indeed, Uthman is the first to migrate along with his family after Sayyidina Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is a virtue of both Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina, his wife Sayyidina Ruqayya that they both were the first family, member, family members to migrate after Sayyidina Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam set off for Badr, for the battle of Badr, Sayyidina Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha was ill. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam left Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an behind and commanded him to stay behind to look after Sayyidina Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyidina Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha at the age of 20 years passed away during the time of battle, the Battle of Badr, according to one narration, her passing away occurred when Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu ta'ala an arrived in Madinah al Munawwara with the good news of the success of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Muslims in the Battle of Badr. Others say that she had passed away prior to the arrival of Sayyidina Zayd, but she was buried, she was being buried at the time of Sayyidina Zayd's arrival. And it was during the time that they were burying Sayyidina Ruqayya that the takbir could be heard. And when Sayyidina Uthman inquired about the takbir, it was found out that Sayyidina Zayd radiallahu ta'ala an was upon the blessed camel of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the glad tidings of the success in the battle of Badr. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam included Sayyidina Uthman amongst those who partook, who took part in the battle of Badr because of the fact that Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an would have been part and parcel of the battle physically if it was not for the situation of the illness of the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not present in the funeral and the burial of his daughter Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha because he was in Badr at that time. This is also, this also withholds a great lesson for this ummah in terms of Rasulullah's life is the best of examples for us and the tests that the Anbiya alayhim salam faced were the greatest of all tests. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam apart from Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha all his other children had passed away prior to his meeting his Lord. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam placed Sayyidah Zainab, his beloved daughter, with his own hands in her grave. And he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the battle of Badr at the time that his daughter passed away and he was not present during the burial and the performance of the janaza of this daughter this shows to us and this is a solace for those who face these circumstances who face these tribulations and trials and difficulties in their lives and the main thing is that one is always in the obedience of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then when one is in that situation, then no matter how many difficulties come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the person sabr, patience and a greater reward. Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha had a son by the name of Abdullah and that's why Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha is known as Abu Abdullah. 
Abdullah was born in Habsha in Abyssinia when Sayyidah Ruqayya and Sayyidah Uthman anhuma, had migrated to Abyssinia. His birth took place in Abyssinia. At the age of six, Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala an, according to some narrations such as the one mentioned in Sharh al-Zarqani, at the age of six, in the fourth year of Hij uh, Hijra, Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala an passed away. So after, not long after, his mother had passed away. His mother had passed away in the in second year after the Hijra of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's mentioned in Ustul Ghaba that he was afflicted with an illness after a rooster hurt his eye and that his, he passed away in Jamaad al-Ula of the fourth year after Hijra. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed his janaza and Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an entered into his grave. Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, after her passing away, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave Sayyidah Ummikul Ummikul Thum radiallahu ta'ala anha in the marriage of Sayyidah Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. So it's upon this basis that the marriage of Sayyidah Ummikul Thum radiallahu anha took place after the marriage of Sayyidatuna Ruqayya that many scholars say that Sayyidah Ruqayya was older than Sayyidah Umm Kulthum. And Ibn al Athir has given preference to this position that Sayyidah Ruqayya is older than Umm Kulthum in his words, was Sahihu Annaha. Sorry, Ibn Athir has given preference to Sayyidah Umm Kulthum being younger than Sayyidah Ruqayya and Sayyidah Ruqayya being older than Sayyidah Umm Kulthum. In the words that was Sahihu Annaha Asghar min Ruqayya. The correct position is that Umm Kulthum is younger than Ruqayya. So Sayyidah Ruqayya, uh, Sayyidah Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha was married to the other son of Abu Lahab who is known as Utayba. However, Utayba gave talaq, divorced Sayyidah Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha Upon the, com, uh, upon the forcing and compulsion of his father Abu Lahab. But the action of Utayba in the divorce was worse than that of Utba. So whilst the husband of Sayyidah Ruqayya had given her divorce, he later entered into Islam. Utba later entered into Islam. And on the day of uh, the Fath of Makkah, along with his brother Mu'attib. And it's mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam was pleased with the Islam of Utba and his brother Mu'attib. And both of these Companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi were present during the Battle of Hunayn. They took part in the Battle of Hunayn, and they are now the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Allah be pleased with them. But Utayba was very disrespectful to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi did a dua: Allahumma sallit alayhi kalbam min al kilab. O oh Allah, set upon him an, a wild animal from the wild animals. So during a journey to Sham, Abu Lahab was with Utayba and they were in an area where there were lots of wild animals. And Abu Lahab said that we should try to protect Utayba because the Prophet Muhammad wasallam has done a dua against him and therefore there is a threat. He understood that the dua of the Prophet is powerful. But his arrogance meant 
that he was not able to accept Islam. And so he tried to protect him, but a, a lion eventually came and killed Utaybah and destroyed him. So because he was more vicious and disrespectful in the court of Rasulullah this was his end. Whilst his brother, although he divorced the daughter of Rasulullah he was not disrespectful in the court of Rasulullah in that way and therefore he was protected. Later he was protected from the shaitan and brought into the folds of Islam. The ulama of Seir, the ulama who write in relation to the life of the Prophet وسلم, point out here the severity of disrespect in the court of Rasulullah That the one who disrespected Rasulullah was destroyed in this manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such heresy. After Sayyidah Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away in the second year of Hijrah, immediately after Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam performed the nikah of Sayyidah Umm Kulthum with Sayyidah, uh, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. It's mentioned that this was in Rabiul Awwal of the third year of Hijrah that this marriage took place. However, Sayyidah Umm um Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha was not blessed with any children. And that is also a lesson for the Ummah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi family and their situation is also a lesson for the Ummah and a removal of jahiliyyah, a removal of, of ignorance. It's not within anybody's power to have children but rather it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's discretion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine will who he grants children to and who he does not grant children to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yahabu liman yasha'u inatha wa yahabu liman yasha'u dhukur Allah grants whom he wishes daughters and who he wishes he grants to them sons wa yaj'alu man yasha'u aqima and he makes whoever he wishes have no children innahu alimun qadir indeed he is all knowing and all powerful so by having these characteristics within the family of Rasulullah this is also a means of solace for those who are living their lives in this way because this life is a temporary life in which people will have these tests and will have these ways of life people will face the loss of of lives and loss of children and face the difficulties of not having children, face the difficulties of having their wives passing away. And all these things were experienced and found within the seerah of Rasulullah and the lives of his family members. The Prophet said that if I had more daughters, in some narrations mentioned that if I had 10 more daughters, I would give each and every one, one after the other to Usman radiallahu ta'ala and in our discussion on Sayyidina Usman, we mentioned the narration mentioned in Tariq al Khulafa. The Prophet said that if I had 40 daughters, I would marry each to Usman one after the other. Till there would be no daughter left to marry to Usman. So the Prophet said, love for Sayyidina Usman is apparent here. It's mentioned that after the passing away of Sayyidina Rukhaya and her, Sayyidina Usman was aggrieved. Greatly, as anybody can imagine, due to the loss of his wife. But furthermore, because of that con connection that he had to Rasulullah, he said, I wish for this connection through marriage to the daughter of Rasulullah to continue. And the Prophet gave him in marriage the daughter, the other daughter, Sayyidah Umm Kulthum. Sayyidah Umm Kulthum passed away. In the ninth year after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu And that was also in al madinatul Al-Munawwara And the Prophet Sallallahu performed her janazah And she was buried in al baqi ul gharqad In al madinatul Al-Munawwara So these are the lives of the three daughters Summarized 
biographies of the three daughters of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Ruqayya, and Sayyidah Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anhunna. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of these great Amen. beloved leaders amongst the women of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our sisters the ability to follow their footsteps, to carry out the sacrifices that they carried out, and to face what they faced with sabr and patience. So whether it's Sayyidah Zainab's migration and the loss of her child on that way, or whether it's Sayyidah Ruqayya at a very young age of 20 facing illnesses, right? Illnesses are not something new. They're not something of our time alone, right? This life, life is temporary, right? كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَان Whoever is upon this world will be destroyed, will finish, right? And will have to leave this world, will have to face death, right? Labid, the Prophet ﷺ said the most truthful word of any poet is the words of Labid. He said, عَلَى كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مَا خَلَى اللَّهُ بَاطِلُ Everything besides Allah is false. Every blessing will certainly finish. So the blessings of this dunya will certainly finish. The blessings of the akhirah will not finish. The everlasting. And therefore in this we also have a lesson in relation to life on this world. Right? That life is temporary. So now when somebody suffers from an illness at a young age, a terminal illness, right? And they're facing death at a very young age. This should give them solace as well. That the daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu faced this as well. Right? And Rasulullah Sallallahu showed the Ummah what is sabr, what is patience. What is the way of holding on to steadfastness and being happy with the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The main thing is that our dua is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us death with iman, death with faith, and grant us peace in our graves. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made her grave easy for her, has made her grave vast for her. And in the same way we say that Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha as well. And also this is a lesson to us in relation to the difficulties that we face when our children are married and divorces, right? Each of these daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu faced difficulties with their husbands. Whether it was Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anha with a husband who originally did not come into Islam. And then alhamdulillah later came into Islam. And as a companion then he came back to Sayyidah Zainab anha, and came to al Madinah al-Munawwara and resided with her. And on the other hand, Sayyidah Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum anhuma, facing the divorce of the sons of Abu Lahab. But as Ibn al-Athir mentioned, the disgrace was not of the daughters of Rasulullah wasallam. The disgrace was of the sons of Abu Lahab for they were disconnected to the best of all creation sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So this is also a lesson because so many of our people hold stigma onto those families that face the trials and tribulations of divorce and also people um, treat women who have been divorced in a way that is unimaginable, you know, not arranging for their marriage, people not being prepared to marry them, and the communities mocking them, disgracing them for what they're facing. So this is, it's really important that we take this from the lives of our Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and, and for those families that face these oppressions, face these difficulties, that's, where you, that's why the Qur'an says, لَقَدْ كَانْ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا the best of examples is in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu So loss of parents, if you wish to know, if you want to see how to deal with that, you look towards the life of Rasulullah sallallahu Difficulties and tri trials and tests due to children, if you want to see that, you look towards the life of Rasulullah sallallahu 
every matter of life, every difficulty that we can face in life, Rasulullah showed to us how it is possible for us to face these challenges and to overcome them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to do so. Amin bijahi nabi al kareem. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin wa al-muslimat.